to kick off the series, we have Guillaume Moutier and Landon LeSmith from Red Hat here to talk about Jupyter Hub, as well as other tools running on Open Data Hub with OpenShift Container Storage. If you have any questions, again, put them in the chat. And Landon, please take it away. Uh, so my name is Landon Smith. I am working on the team uh, that is uh, working to provide uh, Open Data Hub. So I'm just going to give a quick introduction about Open Data Hub before I turn it over to Guillaume. So uh, the Open Data Hub. Uh, Open Data Hub is a project to demonstrate uh, how easy it is to run your AI and ML workflows on OpenShift. Uh, so it is a reference architecture, a project, a community. Um, we host all of our information on opendatahub.io where you can find blogs, uh, tutorials, guides for the different components that we provide uh, as part of the Open Data Hub. Uh, so the main entry point into Open Data Hub is the Open Data Hub meta operator. Uh, so we call it a meta operator because it is an operator that deploys other operators or components, uh, which can include different uh, products that are um, available in the Open Data Hub. So Jupyter Hub will be one of the kind of the main ones featured during this talk. Uh, it's also uh, a project that we're running internally at Red Hat uh, for our internal data science and AI platform. So this is to make it easier to control the entire life cycle from data ingestion to data uh, transformation to modeling uh, to kind of make it easy for data engineers and data science to, scientists to perform their workflows on OpenShift. Um, so it's an entire end-to-end -end process. Uh, so we have support for object storage uh, through uh, Ceph object storage. Uh, we've hosted uh, many workshops and workflows that's our uh, storage of choice. Um, just to make it hybrid data. Uh, so uh, Spark and Jupyter Hub with uh, TensorFlow support are main projects that are being used um, by the data scientists. Um, and we're also bringing it in line with Kubeflow. Uh, so we want to make sure that it's compatible with upstream products um, that uh, the community is using. So this is just an overview of kind of the, the main features of Open Data Hub uh, and a breakdown of kind of the different components that satisfy needs for, for uh, target audience. Um, so you'll see for storage, we support all different types of storage versions for uh, Ceph object storage, uh, Postgres, uh, MySQL database access. Uh, you can interact with those using our data catalog components or superset. Um, and for the data scientists, we have all, or for a lot of the major libraries that are being used in their workflow. So uh, one of the problem or uh, issues that uh, Open Data Hub looks to resolve are uh, teams of data scientists, developers, engineers working together. So a common, common platform um, that uh, takes care of all the deployment uh, headaches, uh, upgrades, um, with running these different products. Uh, we want to make sure it's easy um, and um, intuitive to use uh, while you know, eliminating a lot of the, the maintenance needs. So here are a list of like the major components that are available in Open Data Hub. The current version is 0 0.5.1. Uh, this is available in the OpenShift Operator Hub. Uh, so you can deploy it now uh, and test it out. Uh, we have Prometheus and Grafana for modern, uh, monitoring, uh, Selden for serving your models, Apache Spark for data engineering, um, and data analytics. Uh, Jupyter Hub is one of our co core components to support multi-user Jupyter notebooks, uh, Ceph uh, for our object storage, uh, Kafka for uh, uh, streaming events, um, and Argo for our pipeline. Additionally, uh, with the most recent version, we've added support uh, superset um, for data exploration and our data catalog, which combines multiple components so that you can query, visualize, and uh, analyze your data. And here are a few of the upstream communities that we're working with. Uh, Open Data Hub and specifically Jupyter Hub has support for uh, GPU workloads. Um, so on opendatahub.io, uh, we have docs for 
enabling your GPU, um, GPU nodes in your OpenShift cluster. Uh, we're actively working to bring Open Data Hub in line with Kubeflow, so you can stay tuned for more information about that. And then upstream components, what we're calling upstream or things that are outside of, of Red Hat um, uh, that we want to work with. Uh, so we, we don't customize them or attempt to not customize them. We're working with the pure upstream components. And again, this is on uh, Operator Hub. So in your OpenShift cluster, you could find us and deploy the operator to test it out. Common use cases. So uh, Jupyter as a service uh, is our kind of main entry point into the Open Data Hub. Uh, Jupyter notebooks are what uh, a lot of the teams of data scientists, data engineers are using to interact with their data. Uh, they had it coming in from multiple sources, from Kafka events to step object notifications. Um, and they want to be able to do some model training on that uh, using GPUs. Uh, so internally, we're running this. Uh, we have 40 plus concurrent Jupyter instances across multiple GPU nodes. And uh, on any given time, we have you know, 13,000 peak events per second in Kafka and daily kind of 350 plus gigabytes of data, uh, data that are being transmitted. This is all uh, using uh, Ceph object storage. So it's self-service uh, with our team of data scientists and data engineers. We can just point them to a uh, link to access a Jupyter notebook. Uh, it's completely customizable. So if, if we have uh, a team that wants to use uh, TensorFlow notebooks, SciPy notebooks, or all of the same notebooks with GPU uh, enablement or GPU access, they can. Uh, so they can go through the whole uh, development lifecycle, model, test, inter, um, and iterations with full access to resources that are available in that cluster on OpenShift. And there's uh, limited support for multi tenant So uh, the Open Data Hub runs within a namespace. Uh, so if you have different needs, different restrictions, or capabilities for, for different teams, uh, you can run these in independent uh, namespaces within your cluster. And pulling of sharing of resources, um, the OpenShift model to, you can request resources uh, that are available in the cluster uh, specific to your needs. Uh, Jupyter Hub and Open Data Hub have full support for that. And it's multi-tenant. Uh, so um, that's kind of a quick intro to Open Data Hub. If you want more information, please go to opendatahub.io. We have a lot of getting started guides, tutorials um, on GPU enablement, uh, deploying kind of Ceph object store in your cluster, and using the different components of Open Data Hub. Our uh, Open Data Hub group is currently available on GitLab, um, so you can uh, follow that, get more information about development of the operator. Uh, we have a Kubeflow, ODH Kubeflow GitHub project that we're currently transitioning to. So you can find more uh, information about that initiative. And join our mailing list if you want to get updates whenever we release new versions of the operator or even the project in general. Uh, feel free to sign up for that. And uh, we give a lot of talks, workshops, conferences uh, at conferences. So you can find most of our videos for different conferences on the AI ML playlist on the OpenShift Commons YouTube channel. So with that, I will turn it over to Guillaume. Thank you, London. Uh, hi, everyone. Okay, so uh, as London explained, uh, Open Data Hub is, uh, is a fantastic tool uh, for uh, your uh, data science platforms. But of course, if you want to, to, to play with uh, data science, you have to get data. So that means you have to store it somewhere. And that's where uh, OpenShift Container Storage can uh, come into play and help you for this. Uh, OpenShift uh, Container Storage was released uh, a few weeks ago. And basically what it does, it brings you all the different types of storage you may need uh, directly inside uh, OpenShift. So uh, what it is, in fact, is uh, Rook that is controlling and deploying uh, Ceph underneath running directly on your OpenShift cluster, plus uh, Nubas, so the, the multi-cloud gateway that brings you object storage with uh, with other fancy features, uh, which uh, I engage you to, 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 to look at. So 
What we have to retain here for this demo is that with OCS uh, deployed, you can directly have blocks, files, and object storage directly uh, from within OpenShift and using the same uh, tools as you usually do uh, within OpenShift, that is uh, making claims uh, or using uh, standard YAML files to, uh, to provision all your different types of data that you need. So what we'll do here is leverage LCS to provide uh, different types of storage directly inside uh, inside Open Data Hub and uh, especially inside the Jupyter Hub. Uh, of course, you can do it manually, that is providing object storage for one of each user. But what I wanted to do in this demo is to push it a little bit further uh, to demonstrate how everything can be fully automated in, uh, in such a platform. So, before someone asks, all the code here is available here at this repo. So that means that you will be able to, to reproduce it and uh, or takes bits and pieces of what I did to, uh, to, to, to suit your, uh, your case. What I want to do here is to have my Jupyter environment providing two types, using two types of storage for my standard files that we see here. So there are some notebooks and uh, uh, some other files. I would want to use, let's call it standard storage. So I will make uh, uh, a persistent volume claim that will use a storage class provided directly by OCS. So here it would be block storage that will be automatically provisioned for a new user. But at the same time, I want also to provide uh, object storage to my user. So I will make an object bucket claim, which will automatically create a bucket uh, through OCS. And uh, what I will do as a fancy thing is uh, display it directly inside my uh, Jupyter environment. And everything will be fully automated. So that means the user won't have to manipulate any uh, access keys, secret keys. Uh, this is what we're gonna do. So. For that, only two prerequisites uh, to have OCS installed, of course, and uh, the S3 endpoint that you that you will use. You have to do, to take note of it, and a project where Open Data is deployed, uh, which is quite easy to do. I almost do it twice a week right uh, right, uh, right now uh, because of the uh, operator that is uh, that is so great. It's a very easy way to deploy your data science platform. Once you have both of this, what we will do is use a, a custom Jupyter Hub config. Uh, this is some uh, configuration that will be appended at the, at the end of the Jupyter, uh, the Jupyter Hub deployment. And this code, what it will do is each time a, a user logs in and launch his notebooks, it will create a new object bucket claim if there is a none present. It will retrieve the configuration, the access and secret keys for the specific user, and inject everything as environment variables in the in the user's pub. Okay. Uh, then we will uh, deploy uh, Open Data Hub itself with some uh, specific uh, uh, specific configuration. Here we will use this custom config map that we created before. And that will do uh, all the things I explained. We will enter the S3 endpoint URL. So if you have deployed standard OCS, it's, it's as simple as s3.openshift-storage, uh, uh, which is the namespace in which OCS is deployed. And we will indicate the storage class to use uh, when creating PV, standard PVs for uh, users. Okay, so uh, of course, here is the command line for uh, for the code that is available in the repo. Also, we will have to create some uh, roles and roles, role bindings because our special code will uh, create new config maps and we'll have to get access to, uh, to some secrets where the, the access keys and secret keys will be stored for the users. So it's only uh, about here defining a new role uh, which will allow uh, the Jupyter app to get secrets and to create object bucket claims. And then we bind the role to the service account on which uh, Jupyter Hub is, uh, is running. So only a few commands to, to, to run. Uh, we will also use uh, custom notebooks. Uh, well, here this is not uh, mandatory. Here 
custom notebooks uh, is if you want to display directly the, the object bucket storage inside your notebook. So we use here the, the hybrid content manager and the S3 content manager, which is a very uh, interesting open source project. And that is what allow us to show at the same time standard PVs and object storage from within uh, the same uh, notebook environment. And if everything works well, what we uh, should see is when we spawn a new notebook, we will have our standard, uh, standard PV connected and uh, providing this uh, kind of file system. Uh, but also we will connect here to the, the standard, uh, to the object bucket that we, uh, we created. So let's see it in action. So here I have uh, in my project ODH on OpenShift, uh, that's Open Data Hub, and we can see that there is the operator uh, already deployed and uh, a Jupyter Hub instance. So it's ready for us, ready for us to, to, to use it. If I go to Jupyter Hub, so it's the, the route that was created uh, when the Jupyter Hub was, uh, was deployed, I can sign in to OpenShift, and here I created a bunch of uh, Big users. So I will start with a, a new one. Uh, Nicole, who has never connected to Open Data Hub, so I have to do hello there. And uh, here you can see that we have the different notebooks images that uh, that we can choose, and we will choose the custom ones that we uh, that we have uh, provisioned before, uh, which I call the S three minimal S three because we add some connection, automatic connection to S3. Uh, here, I don't have to enter anything because it will be automatically provisioned and, uh, and uh, injected inside the environment. And then I will spawn my notebook. It will take a few seconds. If we go back here, we can see that there is a new container creating. That's the uh, the notebook environment for the for the user. So the container is creating here. We'll have to wait a few seconds. Okay, so now it's running. And there we have it. That's the environment uh, that was just created for Nicole. And we can see that there is well nothing, no files yet because it's a brand new PVC. But there is already a connection to uh, an object bucket here. Uh, which is called Data Lake with the name of the bucket. It's not very fancy. Uh, I should definitely change the code to, <laughs> to have a better display. Uh, but, uh, but this is the object storage, and of course, you can uh, go through it. So if we take a look at what happened behind the scene, we can see in the storage that there has been a new PVC created for Nicole, okay, which is there with the default of uh, two gigabytes that is provisioned. So that's the the, the standard uh, claim that was made to storage to, to, to provision nickel with a new storage base, okay? What also happened is that an object bucket was, uh, was created and we can see it here in the config map. So we have uh, ODH bucket nickel, that was the claim that was made with the config map, and we can see that there is a bucket that was created, and also a secret. A secret is all the informations that are required to connect to this specific bucket. Okay? And that's exactly the that's exactly the, the, the environment variables that have been injected inside the notebook. Okay, so he thought we can have them. So we have the access key, the secret key. So that's what allows the notebook to directly connect to the object storage and retrieve the information. If we take a look at Nuba, here we have a list of the, the different buckets that have been created. And here we can see uh, at the end, uh, 4015, that's the bucket on which we are connected. Okay, 
So here there is nothing provisioned. So what I will do is just change users. Uh, I will just stop my server here, which will just shut down the environment. So here we can see that the pod is being terminated. And I will log out and log in again with another user, with Frank. Frank has already connected before. So his, uh, his storage has already been provisioned, both the PVCs and the uh, object bucket claim. And just wait a few seconds. So here it's uh, launching, the container is created. Okay. And then we will have access to his workspace. So here we can see that Frank has already been working on some notebooks, uh, doing some uh, uh, some uh, Keras training model and things like that. And uh, of course, we have reconnected him directly to his uh, to his PV. Okay, but we have also reconnected him to this data lake environment. Okay, so here. Is the, is the file with the bucket that has been created especially for it. What I did also is a little trick because I wanted to create some object storage, a space that would be, that could be shared between each and every users. Okay. So what I did in Nuba is create a bucket, which I called shared data and of course you can do everything like this. Uh, uh, programmatically. So here I have allowed access to this bucket to this account, which is the one from Frank. And while I'm there, I will also connect Nicole to it. Okay. And that's what allowed me to directly uh, show this uh, this bucket because the code, the special code that we uh, injected inside uh, inside Jupyter Robot, it does is list all the buckets to which every user has access and links them and show uh, all those buckets directly inside the environment. So here that means that Frank can go to the shared data uh, folder and see that there are already some files that he can use. Uh, those are here images to, to train his, his model for uh, pneumonia detection. There is a credit card CSV file. So that's a, a very great way to have some central point where all the users can share data sets that allows you not to have people uh, copying over and over the same data sets for, uh, for training and everything. There are some standard uh, tools and files that you want to be able to share between, uh, between people, and that's the great way to, to, to do it. So here, I'm gonna, again, log out on, of this environment and go back to Nicole because, oh, because as you remember, I now have allowed her to have access uh, to uh, to the shared uh, object store. So if I launch her environment again, wait uh, a few seconds. It's there. Okay, running. So should come very soon. Okay, so we see that now she has her own uh, PVs uh, with a file, uh, no file yet in there, her own object storage, but she also has now access to the shared uh, to the shared data object store. Okay. And that's, again, a pretty neat way to, to, to set up your data science platform so that everyone can, uh, can collaborate. Okay. So in this quick demo, uh, that of course you can reproduce as the as I said the the, the code is uh, available and then I will show you again uh, all the resources here. Uh, I, I just showed you that it's uh, quite easy to set up a full data science platform with a fully automated storage provisioning for your users, both with standard block storage and object storage, we could do the same with uh, leveraging uh, SFFS with uh, shared, uh, shared file systems. And uh, everything can be totally uh, automated 
using standard uh, Kubernetes and, and OC commands. So uh, that was it for me. Uh, back to you, Karina. And uh, I think we have some time left for uh, questions. Thank you, Guillaume and Landon. Um, I am Karina Angel. And again, this is the first in the series of all things data for OpenShift Commons briefings. And to look at the briefing calendar, go to commons.openshift.org and we'll add more there. Um, Diane runs so many great briefings, so make sure to look at the YouTube and watch previous briefings. Um, if anybody has any other questions, please put them in the chat now. Uh, Thomas, are there decks available? Yes, we'll follow up with you afterwards. So thank you for your question. Great, thank you everybody. And we will see you hopefully next week.